Here are the 8 most dangerous places to swim in the world. You know, there's a lot of amazing outdoor swimming areas in the world. Some of them are safe and protected with lifeguards watching over you while you swim, bathe, dive off rocks, and play in the water. But some beaches are not just unsafe, they're outright dangerous. Yeah! So, here are 8 places where you should never attempt to swim if you treasure your health and life. Really? All right, here we go. Number 8. Blue Holes Now, these mysterious and amazing formations were created by nature thousands of years ago. They're located all over the world and have the common name of blue holes. They are sinkholes situated underwater. In fact, they are vertical caves that branch into numerous long underwater hallways. Most blue holes are open to the public. However, some of the biggest ones have acquired a really bad reputation among divers. For example, there's a blue hole in the Red Sea. Wow, that's colorful. That attracts adrenaline junkies from all over the world. This formation has an incredibly complicated structure with hundreds of underwater tunnels. Unfortunately, this hole didn't receive the nickname the Diver's Cemetery out of the blue. Get it? The blue? Yep. Too many inexperienced divers underestimate their skills and, let's say, don't manage to return to the surface in time. Number 7. Colorful Pools It's hard to believe that nature created something as colorful as the thermal pools located in Yellowstone National Park. They look like something from another world, bright, beautiful, and deadly. Ooh. Since 1870, these pools have taken the lives of 22 people. First of all, they're really, really hot. And we mean hot. The thing is that Yellowstone National Park is situated on top of an active supervolcano. In this place, magma is moving somewhere very close to the surface. As a result, the temperature of the water in the hot springs and geysers can reach a whopping 456 degrees Fahrenheit. Terrifyingly, this is hotter than the temperature you use to cook food in your oven. If you stay on the boardwalk, you'll be fine. But if you try to swim in it, you'll be done. Like in, well done. But that's not all. Besides being extraordinarily hot, some of Yellowstone's colorful hot springs are also pretty acidic. For example, the Norris Geyser Basin has hydrothermal vents located under the surface. They emit chemicals that make the water in the geyser highly acidic. On top of that, microorganisms constantly destroy parts of the surrounding rocks, and this increases the amount of sulfuric acid in the pools. Even the bubbles that rise to the surface can lead to serious burns if a person is exposed to them. And while some microorganisms can live in such incredible conditions, humans can die from the fatal burns caused by the water. Number 6. Laguna Caliente Laguna Caliente is located in Costa Rica and differs dramatically from its sibling, Botos Lake. These two bodies of water are crater lakes of the Boas volcano. But while Botos Lake is a peaceful place with clear water surrounded by rich forest, Laguna Caliente is one of the most acidic lakes in the world. Its acidic content is higher than that of a car battery. So, for obvious reasons, you probably won't be willing to swim in this lake. But avoiding the acidic waters doesn't mean that you'll stay safe. The lake has the eerie ability to create both acid fog and acid rain. They can harm people even when they don't approach the shoreline. Number 5. Niragongo Crater's Lava Lake Mount Niragongo, which is situated in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is an active volcano. 
Its last eruption took place in 2002. In its crater, there's a lake. But it's not your typical lake. This is the largest permanent lava lake in the world. The depth of this lake fluctuates all the time. Before an eruption in January 1977, researchers recorded the maximum elevation of the lava level at an incredible 10,660 feet. The average depth of the lake is 2,000 feet. Well, 282 million cubic feet of liquid rock might not be particularly tempting in terms of swimming, but you can probably have a barbecue with toasted marshmallows. Mmm. Just stay several thousand feet away from the lake. Number 4. Pink Lake Oh, that's not Photoshop. Lake Hillier in Western Australia is indeed as pink as it looks. This is a shallow salt lake that's beautifully edged with white salt formations and surrounded by eucalyptus forests. And if you were wondering about the reason for the amazing color of the water, you won't find an answer. Even scientists are at a loss as to what makes the lake so pink. Hey, how about I'm coming out, so you better get this party started. In 1950, a group of researchers investigated this place. Their theory was that the lake's color was influenced by saltwater algae, which tended to produce a red pigment if the water was too salty. However, no trace of the algae was found. Even now, 70 years later, scientists still don't know how the lake manages to stay so amazingly pink. Some believe that the color might be a sign of some deadly contaminant. Others suggest that there is an unknown life form in the waters of the lake. They state that something alive could be causing the lake's bright color. Due to these concerns, those who support this point of view believe that it may be dangerous, if not fatal, to swim in Lake Hillier's waters. But even if you don't think that some alien creatures dwell in the lake, it's still highly unpleasant to swim there. The Pink Lake is extremely saline. Due to the exceptionally high salt content, there are no fish. And if you get into the water, it's recommended that you don't stay there for longer than 10 minutes. Number 3. New Smyrna Beach This beautiful location is situated in Florida. It would be a perfect place for both beachgoers and surfers, but for hundreds of hunting sharks. The water close to the beach teems with fish, and that's what attracts sharks to this place. New Smyrna Beach has been called the shark capital of the world by the International Shark Attack File. This is one list that you don't want to be on. In 2008, almost 40% of all shark attacks on the planet happened in this region. So, if you're a thrill-seeker who dares to enter the water, there will be at least one shark at a distance of 10 feet from you. That's what scientists who have been monitoring the beach say. The worst thing about this situation is that the sharks living in the waters along New Smyrna Beach are bull sharks. They are notorious for their aggressive behavior. So, think twice before you risk a swim. Number 2. Frying Pan Lake If you look at the photo of Frying Pan Lake in New Zealand, you might think that there's fog hanging low over the water. Similar fog, or more precisely, steam, forms over warm water on a cold morning. But if you believe that's what's happening with Frying Pan Lake, you are dead wrong. The water of the lake is almost always as hot as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. On top of that, the lake emits hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide, which adds to its mysterious appearance. Not only a swim, but even a boat trip across the lake will lead to disastrous consequences. At the same time, the blue color of the lake and the steam that covers it attracts tourists from all over the world. Number 1. Eagle's Nest Sinkhole 
Eagle's Nest Sinkhole is a body of water in Florida that looks like an ordinary pond. It's only when you get into the water that it gets dangerous. Beneath the lake, there's a huge system of underwater caves with rooms and passages that spread for miles. Some rooms are as large as a football field. Some passages are the size of a door. The deepest point in this sinkhole lies 310 feet below the surface. The place was closed in 1999 after too many people had died there. In 2006, it was reopened, but its popularity has significantly decreased. Hmm, I wonder why. People have probably finally understood the danger this sinkhole presents. When you imagine a lake, the first thing that probably comes to mind is a calm pool of water where you can swim, sail, or just sit and enjoy the serene beauty. Well, I don't think you're going to want to go anywhere near the lakes I'm going to tell you about, let alone take a dip in their dangerous waters. Number 1. Lake Karachi, Russia Dubbed the most polluted place on Earth, Lake Karachi is no body of water you want to be anywhere near, and that's because it was chosen as a dumping site for radioactive waste back in the 1950s. After accumulating this toxic stuff for over 60 years, Karachi became a literal nuclear weapon in and of itself. Even standing near its waters for just a minute without protection can cause severe health issues, and spending over an hour there will be 100% lethal. The good thing is that no one is really allowed to visit this place without special permission. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to go there even if I could. Number 2. Lake Rakshastal, Tibet You can't talk about Tibet's Lake Rakshastal without mentioning its neighbor to the east, Lake Manasovar, and that's because Tibetans see the pair as embodiments of darkness and light. You'll understand why once you actually compare the two. Manasovar is a freshwater lake with plenty of fish, and locals praise it as a gift from the gods. Rakshastal, however, is so salty that literally nothing can survive in its waters, and those who live in nearby villages consider it poisonous. The lake itself isn't really that dangerous, unless you're afraid of pure salt, because you can at least tread in the water. It's just that nothing can live in it. So, would you dare to take a swim? Number 3. Boiling Lake Dominica Well, the name says it all for this one. Located in Dominica's Morantois Piton National Park, this lake can reach temperatures of 197 degrees Fahrenheit along its edges. The center, however, must get a lot hotter, since it literally starts to bubble and boil. It doesn't boil all the time, though. Sometimes it's just your typical volcanic lake with an awesome view over it, and people do sneak in and swim there. I say sneak because swimming in the lake is strictly prohibited, giving that the constant threat of totally unpredictable spurts of scalding hot water means your life is always in danger as long as you're inside the lake. Number 4. Lake Natron, Tanzania If there's a really notorious lake on our planet, it's definitely Lake Natron. I mean, with just one look at its reddish tint, you pretty much know that something's off with this body of water. First of all, the water can get as hot as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The red stuff is salt, so it's certainly not a freshwater lake, and its pH level is about 10.5. This makes it so alkaline that very few creatures can live in it. In fact, if you happen to touch the water, you can even get a severe chemical burn. What makes the picture even more eerie are the statue-like remains of birds and animals who were mm, unfortunate enough to go near Lake Natron. Besides all that, this lake is actually pretty cool. Well, you know what I mean. Number 5. Horseshoe Lake, California, USA There are lakes surrounded by lush forests and green pastures. And then there's Horseshoe Lake that only has dead trees for hundreds of feet around. 
This lake is among the deadliest in the world because of its CO2 emissions. It's so hazardous that there are dozens of warning signs posted miles before you actually drive into its vicinity. And if you're careless enough to do so, you risk suffocating from a lack of oxygen. Uh, yeah, probably time to turn around then, don't you think? Number 6. Lake Neos, Cameroon Lake Neos is one of the three explosive lakes we know about. The other two are Lake Monown, which is also in Cameroon, and Lake Kivu in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Wait, back up. Did you catch that? Yeah, this lake explodes. Well, not like a bomb or something. You won't see a fire blast on its surface. But its CO2 deposits at the bottom are quite dangerous, and even the smallest earthquake can trigger their release. This already occurred in 1986, resulting in a massive tragedy for nearby villages. A cloud of CO2 can rise up from the lake in a burst and spread far shore. Fortunately, in the early 2000s, the government of Cameroon installed a system that keeps the CO2 at bay. On the other hand, the lake's natural walls are starting to weaken, so the danger is still very much real. Very scary indeed. Number 7. Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, USA A popular tourist destination located in central Missouri actually holds a dark secret. It's downright poisonous. Despite the fact that it's frequented by tourists from all over the US and even the world, the concentration of E. coli bacteria in its water is so high that you can get sick just by swimming in it. A lot of its beaches have been closed because of the bacterial infection threat, and the state of Missouri is constantly monitoring the situation. The source of the pollution is the sewage systems that flow directly into the lake, contaminating it beyond any measure. And the danger is real. E. coli can be deadly when it enters the human body. So, consider yourself warned if you're planning a lakeside vacation here. Number 8. Lake Michigan, U.S. Now, who would have thought that one of the five great lakes of North America would make it on this list? Yet, here it is, in all its grandeur. Despite its popularity and millions of postcards printed with its image, Lake Michigan isn't as safe as you think. Its underwater currents can be so rapid that if you swim in it, you won't even have time to react when something grabs you and pulls you into the watery depths. I know, creepy stuff. And although the weather conditions are pretty cool around there, the lake itself isn't too kind to people swimming or sailing in it. Lake Michigan is especially dangerous in October and November, so make sure you don't plan a trip on the lake during these months. Number 9. Lake Kivu, the Democratic Republic of Congo Wow, deja vu, huh? I know I already mentioned this lake earlier, but I think it deserves more than just a few words. Just like Lake Nyos, Kivu is an exploding lake and one of the great lakes of Africa. What makes it different from Nyos and Monau is that it holds not only CO2 at its bottom, but also nearly 2 trillion cubic feet of methane an extremely explosive gas. And now, imagine an earthquake happening somewhere nearby. All this methane will be let out, creating a huge burst that could kill everything in its path. What's more, if this toxic cloud meets some source of fire on its way, it'll create a massive explosion. Sounds like a ready-made script for a disaster movie like The Day After Tomorrow to me. Number 10. Lake Champlain, Vermont, USA There's nothing toxic, explosive, or extremely hot about the waters of Lake Champlain. No, it's the lake's inhabitants that make this body of water dangerous. You see, Champlain is home to hundreds, if not thousands, of lampreys. Lampreys are blood-sucking parasites that latch onto their prey to feed. And yes, they have been known to hook onto humans. If you ever see a lamprey, trust me, you wouldn't want one sucking on your arm or leg. I mean, if mosquito bites are a nuisance, imagine what a bite this snake-like thing can have. Now, that's what nightmares are made of. Number 11. Lake Victoria, Africa 
This lake seems so peaceful at first glance. How on earth could it pose any real threat? Well, it's been called the most dangerous lake in the world, and for good reason. That's because weather conditions over it change so rapidly and without any warning that even experienced sailors have no idea when to expect danger. The lake is navigable, of course, but every trip on it is a risk. You never know when a current will form or a strong wind will show up and overturn your boat. Definitely not the best place to take a swim or a nice sail. Well, that just goofed up my vacation plans. Hey, going to the beach? Well, listen up! This phenomenon takes hundreds of lives each year, but only 5% of people know about it. Any experienced lifeguard will warn you about a deadly phenomenon that claims the lives of more than 100 American beachgoers every year. In fact, about 80% of all rescues that lifeguards make have a connection to this danger. No, it's not sharks or poisonous jellyfish or anything like that. The most treacherous thing that can happen to you in the ocean is a totally natural phenomenon called a rip current. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about it in order to stay safe in ocean waters. What is a rip current, and how is it so deadly? A rip is basically a strong current on the surface of the ocean that flows away from the shore. Different factors can cause a rip current to form. For instance, if wave heights change too rapidly, a rip will usually appear. This type of current can show up near piers, boating docks, and groins. Not the bodily kind, but the structures built to protect the shore from erosion that go by the same name. Also, when there are some breaks in sandbars, water returns to the ocean through these channels. This usually happens near the beach and creates extremely strong rip currents that can stay in the same place for weeks or even months. But in any case, the main ingredient for all rip currents is breaking waves. If there are no breaking waves, you don't have to worry about any rips. The main danger of a rip is that it flows seaward away from the shore, so it can easily pull unaware swimmers with it. How dangerous a rip can be depends on the weather, the shape of the beach, tides, and other factors. Average rip currents move at a speed of about 1-2 to two feet per second. But if a current is particularly strong, it can pull you out into the open ocean at an astonishing 8 feet per second. Even the best Olympic swimmer out there wouldn't be able to get back to the shore against such a mighty current. What's worse, rips tend to gain speed dramatically over a short period of time. A lot of beachgoers who can't swim prefer to stay in waist-deep water because they feel safe when their feet are touching the bottom. But they're no safer from rip currents because a rip can easily sweep you off your feet and yank you away from the shore. And if you can't swim, this can end tragically. There are all kinds of misconceptions surrounding rip currents. One of the most popular is that they'll pull you underwater. But in reality, a rip won't drown you. It'll simply carry you away from shore. Whew, that's a relief, I guess. Another widespread myth is that if you get caught in a rip current, it'll keep pulling you out into the ocean forever. Again, not quite. Yes, a rip can pull you quite far into open waters, but even in the worst-case scenario, you won't find yourself miles away from the shore. You'll probably just have to swim a pretty long way to get back to the beach. It's also entirely possible, and quite probable, that the rip itself will bring you back. And that's because 90% of rip currents move in gigantic circles. This means that they flow from the shallow waters to the open ocean and then back again. There's also a misconception that if you don't see a rip current, you don't need to worry. But these things can totally form out of the blue, like if several waves coming from different directions crash into each other. Boom, you now have a riptide. So if the beach you're visiting is infamous for rip currents, always be extra cautious. How to identify a rip current? Going off that last note, in order to be extra careful and safe at the beach, you need to know how to spot a rip current. It often looks like a calm patch of water between breaking waves, which at first glance seems like the best place to enter the water. But don't let the tranquility deceive you, because you might inadvertently pick the most dangerous place to swim. The following signs can also indicate the presence of a rip current. 
Some area has a deeper, darker color than the rest of the water. There's a break in the coming waves. There's seaweed and foam moving toward the shore from the ocean. You see an area of choppy water. What to do if you've been caught in a rip current? When a person gets caught in a rip, their actions determine their fate, period. The first thing you absolutely must do is stay calm. Panicking does not help. In fact, it ends up costing people their lives when they're overcome by it. Second, you need to conserve energy. Do not attempt to swim against the rip current toward the shore. Even the weakest rips move faster than you can swim. If you try to fight the current, you'll just expend all your energy and strength, which will lead to tragic consequences. As we already mentioned, the vast majority of rip currents move in huge circles. They typically flow 160 to 300 feet offshore and then come back around. But still, Associate Professor Rob Brander, whose field of research is rip currents and beach hazards and safety, measured rips that went up to 1,300 feet away from the shore. Dr. Brander also established that there isn't just one overarching escape strategy from a rip current. You should take into consideration the conditions and the rip features. The best thing you can do is stay afloat. Remember to hold your hands up to get the lifeguard's attention and signal that you need help. After that, you have two options. If the rip is circulating, it will eventually bring you back either to a sandbank or to breaking waves that'll take you back to shore. It could also just take you seaward until there are no more breaking waves. At that point, the current ceases to exist, and you can wait for rescuers or even swim back to the shore. Just make sure you're swimming around the rip. The second option will only work for really good swimmers. If you're one of them, you can try to swim parallel to the beach to get out of the current. In some cases, it's possible to break free this way. But this is still a subject of ongoing debate. Dr. Jamie McMahon, a professor of oceanography, was once caught in a rip current himself. Well, he wasn't really caught, but put himself in one at his own free will. As a rip current expert at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, he decided to research rip currents from the inside and record a safety video for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. At one point, while he was trapped in the current, he tried to follow life-saving guidelines and swim parallel to the shore, but realized he couldn't do it because the rip wasn't giving in. Dr. McMahon is very experienced with this sort of stuff, which is why he wasn't in any immediate danger. But the situation made him think. Perhaps trying to reach the beach, swimming parallel to it, isn't the best escape strategy. He started his own research using GPS devices to track rip currents in France, England, and the US. On top of that, he himself has eagerly jumped into rips all over the globe. Talk about dedication to your work! Among the great number of currents he studied, only 10-20% to did not return back to the shore. The rest of them moved in circles. So, if you get trapped in a rip, you can't really know where it's flowing. Therefore, swimming parallel to the beach leaves you with a 50-50 chance that you'll be struggling against the hazardous current. The conclusions he made based on his research are certainly different from what most people are told. According to Dr. McMahon, when caught in a rip current, you should just relax and go with the flow. He says that chances are it'll bring you back to the shore in a few minutes. McMahon's research has definitely sparked a number of heated discussions within the rip current research community. And while his findings are used in Australia to teach people how to survive dangerous rips, in some countries, his conclusions and recommendations are ignored or even considered potentially fatal. In any case, the main reason why people lose their lives when stuck in a rip current comes down to panic. When they find themselves suddenly being pulled away from the shore at a high speed, terror ensues. They start to panic, wear themselves out in the fight, and drown because of it. What you should do instead is stay calm, take control of the situation, keep afloat, weigh your options, and don't exhaust yourself. If you take these steps, you'll have a much better chance of getting out of this horrible situation alive. Someone's screaming for help. They've seen shark fins in the water. 
The lifeguard is waving a purple flag, but it's too late. The jellyfish have taken over. There's a huge wave approaching the shore at 90 degrees. Panic breaks at the beach. You have one chance to save them all with your time traveler kit. You take your beach survival guide with you and push the red button. Voila! You made it to the beach one hour before things went wrong. Some kids built a huge sandcastle. They were digging deep to get more and more sand. That pit they made right by the water can turn into a sinkhole. It doesn't fill completely, so someone can twist an ankle if they step in there. Sometimes, people even fall in huge sinkholes. The sand fills them back immediately and feels like concrete thrown at you. You tell everyone around the sandcastle to watch where they step. The spongy sand area here could be quicksand. It forms near riverbanks, marshes, and beaches, and is 70% water. It seems solid, so you check it with a stick and step on it lightly. It holds the weight. If someone doesn't know how to handle it, they might sink down to the waist. The secret for getting out is to stay calm and slowly wiggle your legs out lying on your back. You mark the area with four sticks for those who don't know the rules. You notice a wave quickly moving at right angle to the shore. Beach Survival Guide says it's a rip current. They can form in any part of the world. You tell everyone to stay out of the water until it's gone. Rip current corridors are usually narrow and not dangerous, but they can get long and wide as a bowling lane. This beast can pull you in the water even from the shore. If you get caught in a rip current, try to stay calm to save energy and come up with a good plan. Don't try to fight the current, it'll always win. Swim parallel to the shore until you're out of it. If that doesn't work, try to scream for help or wave a hand. If you're trying to save someone out of a rip current, throw them something that floats. If you go in the water to save them, both of you might need help. An older couple must want some quiet, so they swim closer to the pier away from the crowd. You get in the water to warn them it's a bad idea. Most rip currents form close to piers, jetties, and other structures in the water. But even a small current can carry you right into that stone construction. You spot a group of divers. They're carrying underwater cameras to take pictures of marine life. You tell them to watch out for flower urchins. They look like beautiful corals, but in fact have poisonous spines to scare away their predators. These spines are also dangerous for humans. If you step on any sea urchin, it feels like stepping on nails or glass. Some sea urchins also have venomous bites. Some sea snakes have more venom than cobras. They use it to paralyze fish, but will never attack humans first. Sometimes the tide washes them out of the water. They will pretend to be lifeless, but can still bite out of reflex. This bite can give you some nasty symptoms. The lionfish that lives in the Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea is one of the most beautiful sea predators. They can sting you by accident with their cobra-like venom. It hurts like the sting of a thousand bees. Some algal blooms, also called red tides, can have dangerous natural toxins in them. If you spot black, white, green, brown, purple, or red algae that looks like cottage cheese, thick soup, or a film on the water, keep your head and especially mouth and nose away from it. Also, take a shower after you get out of the water to be safe. Someone shouting there's a stinging jellyfish in the water. You talk to the lifeguard to put up the purple flag. It's an international sign there are dangerous ocean animals nearby, mostly jellyfish. Some of them are harmless. Others, like box jellyfish, grow about the height of a human and are super dangerous. Lion's mane jellyfish loves colder water of the Pacific and Atlantic oceans and grows the size of a blue whale if you measure it with tentacles. It uses them to hunt. You take a loudspeaker and inform everyone what the purple flag means. It's best to stay out of the water when you see it. If you must get in the water, at least wear a diving suit to protect your skin. One jellyfish is lying motionless on the shore. You don't let anyone pick it up. It can still sting. If that happens, you gotta pour some clean water over your skin and then top it with vinegar. The heat becomes unbearable, and one family is looking for some shadow under the coconut tree. You tell them to find a different spot. A coconut is falling off the height of its tree at a crazy speed. Luckily, they move the towel right before it happened. While the family is looking for a new spot to park their towel, you remind them to drink plenty of water. 
it can save you from a heat stroke. They take more lives every year than floods, lightning, hurricane, and tornadoes combined. Plain water is the best drink choice for the beach to avoid having one. A sweet old lady takes out some bread to feed the seagulls. You run up to her and take the bread to protect her. When you hand bread to seagulls aloft, they can strike you. They can also hurt you with their bills or wings by accident as they fly by. If you feed them, they can follow you and raid your bags for more food if you don't give it to them. So the best you can do is throw all food remnants in trash cans with lids to keep the birds at bay. Two guys are watching a YouTube video about cross sea. It's a rare thing for most parts of the world and only happens regularly near one French island. When underwater current makes the water go one way and the wind sends it another, the waves run in squares, like a chessboard in the sea. Cross seas are super dangerous for swimmers and can even turn over a large boat. They form rip currents and powerful waves. The best you can do if you see it is stay out of the water. A huge wall of foam is moving towards you. It's a shore break, named so because it breaks directly on the sand or in shallow water with full force. If you get in its way, you might get seriously hurt. During shore breaks, water seems deeper than it really is. So when you dive in without checking the depth, you can injure yourself even more. Sometimes these shore breaks get so big and powerful, they can drop people to the ground and carry them into the sea. If that happens and you start freezing in the water, don't try to swim too quickly to keep yourself warm. Relax your arms, control your breathing, and move your limbs as little as possible. Take the fetal position. It's like sitting in the water and hugging your knees. Try to keep some part of your body above the water to save heat. Your body temperature can also drop if you've been in the water for too long. Count to 10 and then back to 1. If you can't do it many times over and over, get out of the water immediately. Otherwise, you could pass out in the water. When you get back to the safe shore, warm yourself up with towels, layers of clothing, and a hat. It's getting dark and you tell everyone to move out of the water. You only have one chance in 4 million to meet a shark at the beach, but it's more likely to happen at or after sunset and before sunrise. Sharks are most active at these times. You also have a better chance to spot it from the distance when it's bright and the sea is calm. You hear thunder roar somewhere in the distance. When that happens at the beach, it means you're already in lightning danger zone. The large open space of the beach and the water is one of the worst places to live through a storm. Everyone's packing and leaving for safety.